Hello and welcome to today's lecture. Uh, we shall continue our discussion on branch prediction. In the last lecture, I have introduced to you the basic concepts of branch prediction and three different schemes have been introduced. Uh, that is one bit branch, predic branch predictor buffer, two bit branch predictor buffer, then correlating branch pre predictor buffer. And today, I shall introduce to you the other techniques related to branch prediction like tournament branch predictor, then branch target buffer, integrated instruction fetch units and return address predictors. So, these are the topics I shall cover in today's lecture. And uh, let us have a very quick recap of the different schemes that I discussed in the last lecture. This is the simple one bit branch predictor and this is accessed early in the pipeline using the branch instruction PC that means, in the instruction fetch cycles then the that, uh, that branch, branch PC is used to index the particularly the lower order bit is used to index a buffer where one bit is stored and that is the prediction, it can be taken or not taken. However, uh, if the prediction is right or wrong depending on that it is modified. So, uh, if it is 0 then it is not taken, if it is 1 then it is taken. So, if the prediction turns out to be wrong then actual outcome is written into this buffer. So, this is how one bit predictor works and uh, we have seen uh, one bit predictor does not give you very good performance. So, a two bit uh, branch predictor was introduced where instead of one bit, two bits are stored and uh, the and the two bits represent 0, 0 corresponds to not taken, 0, 1 not taken. That means, whenever the value is half or more, then it is taken. That means, 1, 0 and 1, 1 corresponds to taken. And if this is the prediction and depending on depending on the outcome, you know uh, the 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 modification is done in the branch target buffer and for example, if the uh, present uh, state is it can be described as a uh, finite state machine and so it can be represented with the help of a uh, uh, the help of a next state table. So, here you can see this is the previous state that corresponds to the prediction 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 um, if the next if the uh, outcome is not taken then this is how it is modified uh, and it is written into the branch target buffer. So, if it is not taken, if it was 0, 0, it, be, it remains 0, 0, if it is 0, 0, 1, it remains 0, 0 and if it is 1, 0, then it becomes 0, 1, if it is 1, 1 and if the it was not taken, it is 1, 0. So, that means, if it is not taken, as you can see, it is decremented. On the other hand, if it is taken, then it is incremented. If it was 0, it is incremented to 0, 1 if it was 0 1 it is incremented to 1 0 and whenever it was 1 0 it becomes 1 1 and if it is 1 1 it remains 1 1 because it is a we are realizing a saturating counter. So, the actual outcome is again stored in this 2 bit branch predictor and essentially uh, what is done by this 2 bit, two -bit uh, branch predictor it adds hysteresis to the decision making process that means, unless 2 predictions are right or wrong the uh, the prediction bit is not modified. So, this is how this uh, two bit branch predictor works. Then coming to the uh, third type that is your correlating branch predictor, uh, basic idea is that how can we capture the behavior of the last n branches and adjust the behavior of the current branch accordingly. So, uh, in the uh, one bit branch predictor and two bit branch predictor what is being done? Uh, it tries to identify what happened for the current branch. It does not concern about the other branches that is present in the program, but in correlating branch predictor, uh, it is a kind of uh, it takes into account a global scenario. So, what happens to the other branches that is taken care of in this correlating branch predictor as I have introduced in the last lecture and how it is being done? The answer is use an n bit shift register and shift the behavior of each branch to this register as they become known. So, the previous n branches may not be the, the branch under consideration, it may be other branches, their outcome is stored in a uh, shift register and this is being used 
and uh, question naturally arises how many possible values uh, will our sleep register have. So, the number of bits will again decide the number of possible outcomes you would like to consider. For example, uh, if it is 3 bits, then uh, and there will be 2 to the power 3, 8 possible outcomes you have to choose uh, 1 out of 8 tables. That means, imagine that many tables and there are so many tables and you have to select one of the table uh, on the basis of this uh, shift register value and decide it. And as I as we have seen, I have uh, discussed it uh, with the help of this diagram, how this correlating branch predictor works. Here two bits of global history uh, that is being used and that selects one of the four possible tables and uh, where the prediction values, two bit prediction value is stored and that can be used for the purpose of prediction. So, this is the correlating branch predictor and uh, in general we can have M n predictor use uh, predictor which where which uh, which uses the behavior of the last m branches and obviously, total number can be 2 to the power n and then uh, with the help of the lower order bit address branch address it selects uh, n bit predictor and that is being used for the purpose of prediction. So, this is the recap of correlating branch predictor and one popular uh, correlating predictor uh, is known as GCR, GCR correlating predictor. In this GCR correlating predictor as you can see how the global history is being incorporated uh, for the purpose of prediction. So, here the uh, branch PC lower order bits of the branch PC is XORed with the global history and uh, then that is used for the purpose of indexing in the branch history table and that is being used for the purpose of prediction. So, this is how GCR correlating predictor works. Okay. Now, uh, we shall focus on tournament predictors. Uh, this is based on the observation that performance is improved by adding global uh, information. Uh, I mean based on the observation that performance is improved by adding global information, tournament predictor takes a step further. We have seen in correlating predictor, we are considering, we are combining uh, local and global predictions and uh, trying to come up with a prediction. So, and it, we have seen that uh, this tournament, this uh, uh, correlating predictors uh, perform very well and can we uh, really go a step further? Here is the, that is the basic idea behind tournament predictor. What is being done? It uses multiple predictors, one based on global information and the other based on local information. So, for simplicity you can have only two predictor, one based on local information, local information in this particular branch whether it was taken or not taken earlier. And global information means other loops, other branches uh, whether they were taken or not taken uh, that information is used. So, this is the difference between local and global. Now, you, you can have two predictors, one local and one global. You have to select one of the two predictors for the purpose of prediction. That is the basic idea of the tournament predictor. So, it adaptively combines local and global predictors with the help of selectors and obviously, it does dynamically with the help of hardware. Because at run time, for a particular branch, at a particular instant it can be taken and, and at some other instant it can be not taken. So, it dynamically changes, so adaptively combines and selects one of the predictors at run time. So, this is the most popular among the multi-level branch predictors. Later on we shall uh, have a look at the contemporary processors and we shall see how this tournament predictor is being used in different uh, recent processors. <coughs> so, uh, this tournament predictors uh, ability to select right predictor for the right branch. That means, you may have many branches. So, it identifies which predictor will give you good result. So, it identifies right predictor for the right branch and that is the basic approach that is being used in tournament predictor. So, let me explain this uh, tournament predictor. Uh, let us assume we have got two predictors. 
predictor 1 and predictor 2 and there are four states. Say here it is use predictor 1 and another is here also use predict 1, predictor 1. predictor 1 and here it is use predictor 2 and you have got 4 states. Predictor 2. Now, how it switches from one predictor to another? So, what is being done? Let us assume uh, it is in the state in this state use predictor 1. Now, uh, you have got two predictors, predictor 1 and predictor 2. Now, if both of them turns out to be 0, that means both turns out to be wrong, then it remains in the same state. So, it, it if it is if the outcome is 0, 0, that means both the predictors turns out to be wrong, then it remains in this uh, particular state. And uh, say predictor 1 turns out to be right and uh, then uh, the predictor 2 is wrong, then it since it predictor 1 has remained true, so it remains in this state again for 0, 1, one 0. And if it is 1, 1, I mean if it is 0, 1, then it will switch from this to this. If it is 0, 1, then it will go from this state to another state. And this kind of, uh, I mean this predictor 1, if it fails twice, then means uh, if it is uh, 0, 1 and again 0, 1 and predictor 2 uh, becomes uh, right in this case, that means if it is 0, 1 again, then it goes to predictor 2. That means that predictor 1 has to fail twice and predictor 2 has to become true twice, only then it will go from predictor 1 to predictor 2. So, this is the boundary between predictor 1 and predictor 2. So, it will go from here to here. So, for all these states 0, 0, 1, 0 and 1, 1, it will remain in this state and only when it is 0, 1, that means predictor 1 has turned out to be wrong and predictor 2 has turned out to be right, it will go from this state to this state. And it will remain in this state again as long as both of them are false, both of them, both the predictions are false or both the predictions are right. And only when it is, uh, only when the other way happens, that means if it is 1, 0, then again it will go back to this state. That means if this predictor 1 is right and predictor 2 is wrong, it moves in that direction. So, it will go from here to here. And uh, whenever it is 0, 1, it will go from predictor 1 to predictor 2. Similarly, similarly here it will remain in this state or let us consider this one first. So, whenever uh, you are using predictor 2 and uh, uh, I mean let us assume that you are in, in this state predictor 2 state, uh, a predictor 2 is being used and if it is 0, 0 again it will remain in this state. If it is 1, 1 it will remain in this state as we have seen that is true for all the cases. 0, 0 that means both the predictors are wrong or both the predictors are right. So, in both the cases it will remain in the same state, the state does not change. Now, uh, yeah, the it will go, it will move in the direction of predictor 2 and it will remain in this state as long as uh, this, uh, this predictor 2 is correct and predictor 1 is wrong. So, it will remain in this particular condition uh, as long as this is true and it will come from this state to this state whenever it is uh, 1, uh, 0. That means, predictor 1 is right and predictor 2 is wrong. So, it will come here and again if uh, the same condition holds that means, predictor 1 is right and predictor 2 is wrong. If it happens twice, it will go to it will it will go to predictor 1. That means, predictor 2 if it fails twice, then it will go to predictor 1. And 
and on the other hand here it will go from this to this if it is 0 1. So, from, from this state to this state, this state it will go that means, you are moving in the direction of uh, predicted 2, if predicted 1 has failed twice and predicted 2 has turned out to be correct. And on the other hand you will go to predictor 1 if it, if it turns out to be true twice and predictor 2 fails twice. So, this is the state transition diagram for this uh, tournament predictor and so basic idea is the counter is incremented whenever the predicted predictor is correct and the other predictor is incorrect and it is decremented if the reverse is situation. So, based on this the tournament predictor uh, prediction works and you can see here only two predictors have been shown it is not necessary that you, you can have only two predictors. So, for the sake of simplicity to illustrate the operation of uh, tournament predictor we have considered two predictors, but there can be uh, more than two predictors in, uh, in real processors as we shall see later. Particularly uh, later on we shall see that DEC alpha processor where this tournament predictor has been used and of course, uh, with much more complexity that we shall discuss later. <coughs> now, this particular diagram shows fraction of the predictions coming from local predictor. So, uh, we have seen that uh, earlier uh, it in either the predictor 1 can be used or predictor 2 can be used and here this particular diagram shows uh, for uh, different benchmarks whether predictor 1 has been used that is the local predictor has been used or global predictor has been used. So, as you can see the tournament predictor selects between a local predictor 2 bit predictor and a 2 bit GCR predictor that GCR predictor which I have already discussed earlier which is a uh, correlating predictor which uses uh, global information for the purpose of prediction and each predictor has 1024 entries each of 2 bits for the uh, for a total of 64 kilobits of information. Now, here you can see the local predictor is used uh, different percentage of times for different uh, applications. So, it is very much application dependent uh, for example, it can vary from 100 percent to 33 percent that means, local predictor has been used 100 percent for some application and, uh, and in some cases only 37 percent of the time the local predictor has been used and for the remaining uh, part of the time uh, the global predictor has been used. So, uh, this simulation shows how uh, the, uh, the tournament predictor works and uh, the variation of the uh, I mean use of different predictors. So, this is a simple case of two predictors, uh, but in real life as I told there can be more predictors and these are the different application programs which I have already mentioned about uh, mentioned earlier. <coughs> so, fraction of predictions by, by local predictor is shown in this diagram and the remaining percentage corresponds to global predictor. Okay. <coughs> now, this is the performance comparison of different type of types of predictors. We have broad, we can broadly categorize the predictors into three types local based on purely based on local information and we have seen 2 bit predictor gives you better result. So, local 2 bit predictor another is uh, uh, which uses both local and global information that is known as correlating predictor and third category is the tournament predictor. So, here as you can see for different predictor size how the performance changes for different predictors. Uh, so, this is based on the misprediction rate of spec 89 as the total number of bits is increased. So, as the total number of bits is increased how, how, how the uh, number of misprediction changes obviously, as you increase the number of bits the performance would improve that means, misprediction rate should reduce, but for one bit predictor as you can see the reduction is not really much. So, uh, it, it uh, from little more than 7 to little less than 7 that is the decrease and there is no improvement even if you increase the size of the uh, 
branch prediction buffer. So, even by increasing the size of the branch prediction buffer, there is no uh, uh, improvement in performance for local 2 bit prediction as you can see here. Then for correlating predictors, which uses both local and global information uh, and you can see uh, starting from 5 percent, it decreases to uh, little less than 4 percent for spec 89 uh, programs and you can get a uh, predict quite little uh, relatively good performance, uh, miss prediction rate is only is less than 4 percent that is for the correlating predictor and uh, actually it has used that GCR uh, predictor for the for this purpose. And third is and here what has been done optimal correlating predictor has been chosen at each point. So, optimal uh, correlating predictor has been used for uh, plotting this diagram and the last uh, curve uh, where the misprediction rate is less than 3 percent for the tournament predictors which I have just discussed in detail. So, for the tournament predictor you get very good performance and you can see uh, you can get a performance uh, uh, I mean less than 2 percent that means for more than 98 uh, percent of the cases prediction is correct. So, it will definitely give you good improvement in uh, processor performance. Now, coming to uh, another very important need uh, that is your in imp important uh, requirement for uh, good performance of processors that is branch target buffer. So far, we have focused on branch prediction buffer. So, outcome of the predictions are stored in the buffer and which is used dynamically uh, in different predictors. Now, let us see uh, why do we need uh, branch target buffer on top of branch prediction buffer. So, in the classic 5 stage pipeline an instruction is identified as a branch only in the ID stage and branch prediction buffer can help decide whether to fetch from target address as we have already seen or from fall through. So, so however, instruction fetch still ends up fetching a uh, uh, possibly useless instruction. That means, uh, uh, whenever you are using only the uh, I mean br branch prediction buffer, so uh, then what happens uh, that is being shown given here. So, even when prediction uh, perfect branch prediction, it cannot achieve 0 cycle branch latency. The reason for that is you know that calculation of the address that will be taken place is done in the either in the execution stage, usually it is done in the execution stage or in a later stage. So, even if, we, if, if your prediction is correct taken or untaken, where the branch will take, take place is not known in the second cycle. So, uh, it is necessary to have branch target buffer, the solution is to have branch target buffer. And this branch target buffer, which which which, uh, which is accessed during the instruction fetch cycle, so a, a cache that stores predicted address for the next instruction after a branch. So you can use a branch target buffer, which will store the information of this of the target address in a cache memory, and that will be used for the purpose of uh, jumping to a particular address. That means you know the uh, whether your uh, branch will be taken or not taken and where it will jump that is also known. Of course, if your prediction is untaken then no problem it is PC plus 4, but when your prediction is taken then that branches has to be known and that branches is calculated if the address is PC relative we have we have already seen that uh, in most of our uh, I mean the example that we have given that is for the instruction set of the simple MIPS pipeline, they are you know PC relative address is being used, used. So, in the PC relative branch uh, uh, case what is being done that content of the program counter is added with the uh, with the displacement or offset. that is being added 
to get to uh, find out the effective address. And this effective address calcul cal calculation can be done uh, in the instruction decode stage or in the instruction execution stage depending on, on whether we are having additional hardware non or not. If we do not have any additional hardware or adder, it is done in the execution stage. And if we use a special adder for the purpose of calculating this effective address, then it is done in the instruction decode stage. So, either in the execution stage or in the instruction decode stage, it the calculation is done. That means, you have to wait till the end of either the instruction decode stage or the end of the execution stage uh, to get the branch address and obviously, it will lead to uh, it cannot achieve 0 cycle branch latency. So, there will be a delay of either uh, 1 cycle or 2 cycles depending on whether uh, when the branch address is calculated. And <coughs> now, there are some variants you can store only the predicted taken branches. So, uh, branch may be taken or not taken. It is not really necessary to store the address on, uh, address of the I mean when the uh, when the branch is not taken, because in that case your address is already known that is your PC plus 4, but only when branch is taken then you have to calculate this way if you use PC relative addressing which is used in the context of branch addresses. And this works well for one bit local predictor and store entry when uh, when changing the prediction of t. That means, when the prediction changes, then this uh, that address has to be changed and only taken branches information is stored in the branch uh, target buffer and use separate target and prediction buffer. So, you can use two separate buffers, one where you will store the branch predictions and another where you will store the branch target buffer that means, where it will jump and this is done in this way. So, branch target buffer address of the branch index to get the prediction and branch address. You must note that must check for branch match now since cannot use wrong branch address. So, earlier that branch target buffer that was uh, used without any uh, tag but in case of branch target buffer, we have to use tag which is conventionally used in cache memories. As we shall see, this is very important because uh, uh, for the branch target buffer must check the branch match now since it cannot use wrong branch address. So, this is how it is being done. So, you can see the cache memory is in this case is storing not only predicted address that is the predicted uh, program counter address, but it is also storing the branch PC uh, as part of the cache memory. So, uh, after you get the uh, get the PC, uh, the PC value of the instruction uh, fetch, after you have fetched the instruction and you know the uh, that, uh, that uh, branch PC, then that is being compared with the branch address that means, this uh, branch PC. So, uh, if, if this if, if the, if the, if the, if it is done uh, in a uh, as it is done in convention conventional ma manner and it is known as content addressable memory. Cam. So, what it what is being done you are you are essentially comparing with a value and then you are using this address and correspondingly you are getting this value. So, this is the uh, this the, the, the cache memory used in this manner and if there is a no match branch not predicted. So, proceed normally. So, you will go for PC plus 4. So, if there is no match with this value. So, what you are doing? You are uh, in content addressable memory, you know the content is compared with this address, with the address that is being done here. So, here also you are, the, you are trying to match a content with the PC of the instruction fetch and if there is no match, 
then uh, the then it is not the content is not present here and branch is not predicted proceed normally on the other hand if there is a matching with any one of the contents that is being present here that means in your uh, branch target buffer uh, that target buffer uh, the pc values which are stored program counter values which are stored uh, if there is a match with any one of them then there is a uh, match and you say that yes instruction is branch and use the predicted pc as the next pc that means corresponding uh, for the corresponding uh, program counter value you will get a predicted pc where the branch uh, target uh, where the uh, branch should target branch should take place so here uh, you get this uh, predicted pc and that can be used for the purpose of uh, fetching instructions immediately. So, you can see uh, using this you can have uh, zero delay. The reason for that you are you are getting the information whether the prediction is taking place or not. You are getting the information where the branch should take place if it is taken. So, in the next cycle itself that means in the uh, after the instruction fetch has been done in the next cycle itself you can uh, fetch the instruction from the target address and uh, its execution can proceed. So, delay is zero, uh, zero delay it can work with zero delay. So, the prediction and address at the same time that is the basic idea of using branch target buffer. <coughs> so, branch target buffer contains prediction for the target address can be used along with a separate branch prediction buffer and at the end of instruction fetch stage we know whether a branch would be taken and if yes and if the target address is known then we can have zero cycle penalty for branches as I have elaborated uh, uh, in detail. Now, let us come to uh, some intricacies of uh, this branch target buffer. So, target address to be stored in the BTP. So, will you store only the uh, predicted taken branches? If it is not taken, then what will happen? If, it, if the prediction is not taken, we know it is PC plus 4. So, it is not necessary to store uh, the target address uh, when the prediction is not correct. And can the branch uh, prediction buffer and branch target buffer be combined? So, this can we use the here we are trying to tell can we use a single buffer to store the prediction as well as to store the uh, branch target address. This can be used very conveniently if, if, the, if it is a uh, single bit one bit prediction. However, whenever we go for two bit predictor then it leads to come uh, uh, leads to some uh, problem complication arises. Why complication arises? We have seen in a 2 bit predictor 00, uh, 011011, predict untaken, predict untaken. That means for that entry and again 01, predict untaken, predict taken. So, what you have to do? This, this will require that target address for branch untaken would also have to be stored. That means, whenever we are using 2 bit predictor, it is not only necessary to store the information of only the branch taken addresses, but also you have to store the addresses of branch untaken addresses. That is the complicacy that arises whenever you go for a combined uh, uh, branch target prediction buffer and branch target buffer in the case of 2 bit predictor. And in many commercial uh, processors like power PC, separate branch target buffer and branch prediction buffers have been used to avoid these complications. And invariably we will see the uh, branch target buffer is uh, not a single bit, always two bit is used and that is the reason why two separate uh, buffers are used, one for branch target buffer and one for branch prediction buffer. <coughs> Now, uh, here uh, how we can combine branch target and branch prediction buffer is illustrated with the help of this flowchart and how the pipeline behaves whenever you have got 
uh, branch target and branch prediction buffers. And we have assumed that instruction fetch only uh, have branch target buffer and ID is responsible for prediction and instruction decode stage is responsible for the purpose of prediction. So, here uh, the first step is send program counter to the memory uh, and branch target buffer. So, the program counter value is sent to both in the instruction fetch cycle, it is sent uh, 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 that send PC to memory as well as branch target buffer. So, PC it is uh, branch target buffer and uh, after sending that whether you have to check whether entry is found in the branch target buffer or not. We have seen there is a uh, if we go back you have to check whether that entry is present in the branch target buffer or not. So, that is being done uh, by this in this step itself entry found in the branch target buffer if the entry is found in the branch target buffer, then question arises whether there are two possibilities, branch may be taken or not taken. If the, if the instruction is taken, uh, instruction a taken branch, if the answer is no, normal instruction execution. Normal instruction execution means the program counter will be that uh, address will be fetched, I mean instruction will be fetched from PC plus 4 uh, for the MIPS pipeline that we have discussed. So, that is the case and you can do it in the ID stage. Now, if the instruction take uh, is the instruction ta uh, taken branch, if the answer is yes, that means your prediction is branch is taken. In such a case what will happen, enter branch instruction address and next PC into branch target buffer. So, in this case you have to enter your information in the uh, enter branch instruction address and next PC into the branch target buffer if your prediction is taken and that we will do in the execution stage. Now, let us see uh, whenever entry is in the previous case entry was not found in the branch target buffer and that is why you have to go up to the execution stage and, to, and there will be a delay of you can see you are losing two cycles in this case. So, uh, you cannot fetch instruction in this stage, you cannot fetch instruction in this case. So, there is a loss of two cycles in this particular case. Similarly, let us see consider the case where uh, the entry is found in the branch target buffer. So, if the entry is found in the branch target buffer, you can send out the predicted PC and if the there are two possibilities again, branch may be taken or not taken. If the branch is taken, then branch correctly predicted and continue execution with no stalls. So, in, the, in this case you can there will, there will be no stalls and you can go ahead with your uh, predicted address. Now, if the uh, if your outcome turns out to be uh, wrong in so, in this case also there is no uh, loss of uh, clock cycles, but whenever your prediction turns out to be wrong. Uh, in, act, in in cases, then you have to, uh, I mean your prediction is wrong, so mispredicted branch. So, what you have to do? You have to kill fetched instruction, restart fetch at the other target address, delete entry from the target buffer. We have seen only the address of the taken branches are stored in the branch target buffer. So, when it is untaken, you have to remove that particular entry and not only that, you have to undo the instructions we have which have been fetched and you have to fetch from the uh, from the next uh, from another address and as a consequence here also you will lose two cycles. So, in this case you will lose two cycles. So, in two cases you are losing two cycles and in two cases you are not losing any cycle. So, current day processors combine target and prediction logic into a separate instruction fetch unit and operate operates independently of the pipeline and there is a special variant stored decoded later on I shall discuss about it this variant. So, I was mentioning about the uh, I mean when there will be penalty of two cycles and when there is no penalty that is being given here assuming a new target is written into PC only at the end of execution cycle. So, instruction in buffer and whenever it is yes and the prediction is taken and actual is taken there is no penalty and your prediction was taken, but actually not taken if there will be loss of two cycles as I have already explained and if the instruction is not in the buffer 
then uh, your if your prediction is not taken, but actually if it is taken, then again you will lose two cycles. And that means in this case you will lose two cycles, but if, if your actually if it is prediction is not taken, then again there, there is no, no, no loss in cycles, because it was not uh, your it was not taken. So, uh, you will not lose any cycles. So, this is how the branch target buffer works and we can have losses in two cases and no loss in two cycles. That means, we can say uh, zero latency. Now, there is another uh, requirement uh, particularly for unconditional uh, cases return address predictor. You know techniques discussed so far work only with direct branches. That means, you have got direct branches and address calculation is done with the help of that PC relating. So, and then branch is taken or not taken, but there are many indirect branches whose outcome is known whether it will be taken or not taken uh, at execution time. So, uh, uh, where you know that target is not PC relative. In such a case, an important category of indirect jump is returns. You know, you will find you are doing subroutine calls. Say here you have got a main program and you may be calling a subroutine and so it will jump to a subroutine and here you will have a return. So, you will be returning to this point in this particular case, but this subroutine this subroutine may be called uh, not by one main program, this is a main 1 and another program say main 2, another main program is again calling subroutine say this say same subroutine. So, in this case it will go here, but you have to return not there, but to this point. So, we find that this particular situation we find that for the same subroutine that return address has to return to different addresses uh, if uh, this particular subroutine is called by different uh, main programs or uh, from multi point places multiple places. So, uh, inside this type of return instructions you will encounter in many situations for example, more than 15 percent of the branches in spec 89. And particularly in object oriented languages like C++ and Java, uh, this type of uh, you know unconditional branches uh, are present on in, in many places. So, in such cases you know that the techniques that we have discussed will not work properly. So, can we predict the return address? So, in this case what you have to do? You have to predict the return address, just like you are predicting the uh, with the help of a branch target buffer you are predicting where the branch will take place. Here you have to predict where the return will take place. So, uh, there are two possible alternative to our two possible options. One is use branch target buffer. So, if we use a simple branch target buffer to store the return address, uh, what will be the outcome? accuracy tends to be low. The reason for that I have already explained say the return address cannot be same cannot be uh, stored uh, for it will not correspond to a particular uh, branch PC. That means, it can be it, it can be dependent on uh, which particular program is calling this uh, subroutine and return has to take place to different points. So, uh, uh, return address depends on the call site. So, call site can be different uh, in, uh, for different instances uh, of the call of a single subroutine. So, what is the alternative? Alternative is to use a return address stack. So, this is how the problem can be overcome. So, with the help of this return address stack, you can push an entry to the return address stack at a call and pop the entry upon return. So, this is how you can resolve this problem. Uh, so, in addition to branch uh, prediction uh, branch target buffer you will require a return address stack. So, 
this the perfect prediction if call depth uh, does not exceed the return at the stack buffer size. Of course, one thing you have to keep in your mind, uh, stack will have limited size. As long as, as, long as the, uh, there is no stack overflow, your prediction will be that, uh, that prediction of the uh, return address will be always correct. Only when there is stack overflow, you will not get uh, uh, correct branch prediction. So, as long as your, uh, your uh, I mean that stack depth is enough, you will get perfect prediction. But if there is stack overflow, then of course, uh, it will not give uh, correct uh, result. Let us see what, what is the uh, simulation results on misprediction rates for different sizes of return address carried out on spec CPU 95 benchmarks. So, we find that as the number of entries in the return address stack is increased, the misprediction rate fails, falls significantly. So, we find that for different benchmark programs, the misprediction rate falls sharply as the number of entries in the return stack incre is increased. But uh, you can see uh, you do not really require a very large uh, stack size, only by uh, using a stack of 16 entries, uh, your uh, misprediction rate is significantly lower except for, I mean except for one, brand, one particular application program that is your uh, Li. For this particular benchmark, it is uh, not 100 percent uh, prediction, I mean prediction is uh, misprediction rate is 0 for all other application except for only one application program that is your Li, where the misprediction rate is about uh, 2.5 percent, we even with this uh, return st uh, stack size 16 entry. If you increase the uh, increase the size of the return stack for this application also, it may become zero. But this particular uh, simulation result clearly demonstrates the uh, usefulness of the uh, return stack, and the size need not be very high. That is also uh, clear from this uh, particular simulation results. Now, uh, the last topic related to this is known as branch folding. Branch folding can be considered as a variation of the techniques that we have discussed. So here, uh, wh what we have done so far, we are in a branch target, branch prediction buffer, we are storing the predictions, 1 bit or 2 bits. In branch target buffer, you are storing the target addresses. And then from the target address, you have to fetch the instruction. Instead of that, why not store the instruction itself? Instead of storing the uh, branch uh, target address, why not store the instruction itself? And that is the basic idea of this branch folding, to store one or more target instructions instead of or in addition to the predicted target address. The advantage is it allows a larger branch target buffer and it allows us to perform an optimization called branch folding. So, uh, essentially branch folding, uh, the, this particular technique is known as branch folding because it allows unconditional branches and can run in zero cycles. That means, uh, normally unconditional branches do not run with uh, zero cycles, but using this branch folding technique, even this unconditional branches will run uh, with penalty of zero cycles. How? How it is done? When the branch target buffer signals a hit and indicates that branch is unconditional, the pipeline can simply substitute the instruction in the branch target buffer for the branch instruction. So, in this case, this is how we are able to achieve uh, zero cycle uh, I mean penalty uh, for unconditional branches. So, this is known as branch folding. Now, let us consider uh, how the, how different types of predictors have been used in different processors. First, we shall consider the case of Pentium processors. Uh, you can see the Pentium 2 bit local predictor, direct jump from 00 to 11 state. 
So, simple 2 bit predictor is being used, but uh, there is some difference with the predictor that we have discussed that saturating counter predictor here from 0 0 to 1 1 uh, jump is taking place. So, it is little different from the, uh, the uh, saturating counter 2 bit predictor that we have discussed. Then for Pentium MX, MMAX, Pentium Pro and Celeron uh, Pentium 2, Celeron and Pentium 2, they use 4 comma 2 correlating product predictor. That correlating predictor where uh, you have got uh, global and local predictors. So, that means, uh, there are 4 global predictor and uh, 2 bit predictor has been used. So, you can have 2 to the power 4 different tables you can say. Uh, out of 2 to the power 4, 16 different tables you have to uh, take one of them from the uh, using the lower order bits of the uh, address and then the 2 bits is being used for the purpose of prediction. <coughs> and Pentium 3 uses 2 level adaptive tournament predictor, but unfortunately the details given for Pentium 3 is very sketchy. And so far as the branch target buffer is concerned, it uses 512 entry branch target buffer. Uh, on the other hand, Pentium 4 uses 4096 entry branch, branch, uh, branch target buffer and it also uses execution trace cache later on I shall discuss about it. So, far we have not discussed about this execution trace cache later on when we shall discuss about cache memories I shall discuss about it. Uh, coming to the predictor in DEC alpha 21264 DEC alpha chip where the predictor is the most sophisticated one which has used tournament predictor. As we have seen a tournament predictor requires three components, selector, global predictor and local predictor. So, and the selector will select between, uh, select uh, either local predictor or global, global predictor. So, three components are there. So, the selector is, it uses a 4 k 2 bit counters indexed by the local branch address to select uh, between local and global predictor as it is shown in this particular diagram. So, this is the selector global history uh, which is being used choice predict. So, this is the selector that is being used for the purpose of prediction. Then you have got global predictor, you have got 4 k entries indexed by the history of the last 12 branches, each entry is a 2 bit predictor. So, global predictor uses and uh, 4 k entries, uh, entries in the global predictor and each entry is 2 bit predictor and 12 comma 2, two uh, 4 k means you require 12 bit, 12 comma 2 correlating predictor is being used uh, as the global predictor. So, as it is shown uh, global predictor where you have got 4 k into 2 bit, this is your global prediction using the global history of 12 bit that is being done. So, this is the global prediction, this is the selection by using the global 12 bit global predictor and now let us come to the uh, local predictor. So, local predictor itself is 2 level, top level is 1 k 10 bit history of the local branch outcomes. So, it and it detects the patterns, pattern means you know 10 bit uh, it, if it if it if all the are all are taken the bit sequence is 1 1 1 1 1 all 1, if it is alternative bit sequence is 1 0 1 0 1 0 and if it are all are untaken then it is all all, all 0 that kind of sequences are taken that is the 10 bit history uh, is used and history used to index a 1 k 3 bit saturating counter table and total of 29 k bit provides high accuracy in the branch prediction and this is the local history table. As you can see this is the local history table then the 10 bit is used to look for the purpose of local prediction and 1 k into 3 bit. So, this local uh, prediction either local prediction or global, global, global prediction is used and that is decided by the selector. So, it will use one of the two for the final prediction. So, this is the predictor used in DEC alpha chip and possibly the most sophisticated one used so far uh, in different processors. <coughs> and in modern processor somewhat similar type of predictors are used. So, we can summarize now prediction is becoming important part of scalar execution. So, uh, branch history table 2 bit for loop accuracy, 
correlation recently correlated recently executed branches are correlated with next branch either different branches or different executions of the same branch and tournament predictor is used where which requires more resources to uh, competitive solutions and pick between them and branch target buffer includes branch addresses and prediction and predicted execution can reduce number of branches and number of unpredicted mispredicted branches and return at the stack for prediction of indirect jump that I have already um, discussed and here we can conclude branch prediction techniques achieve 80 to 95 percent accuracy and exact benefit varies based on the programs type size of buffer and it is crucial for current day processors because uh, nowadays we are using superscalar architecture where multiple instructions are issued and so branch prediction is extremely essential because need to supply multiple instructions per cycle in the subsequent stages based on superscalar architecture and it can also reduce branch penalties by reducing misprediction penalties and fetch from both predicted and unpredicted branches and store uh, buffer instructions uh, from both paths in the BTV. <coughs> and later on we shall see extensions of, I, of this idea is execution trace cache. <coughs> you may be asking how all these are possible? The reason for that is uh, we have seen that Moore's law has uh, is providing us large number of transistors. The dimension of the transistors is increasing. You can put more and more transistors on a chip and that has helped us to use uh, sophisticated branch predictors in the processors. So, with this we have come to the end of today's lecture. Thank you.